In this example, I'm given a set of ordered pairs, a table, and a graph, and I'm asked to determine the domain and range of the function in each of those parts. Now, if we look at the first one, the function is p of x, and p of x is a set of ordered pairs. To determine the domain, I'm just going to look at the input coordinate for each of the ordered pairs in the set that defines the function. And then when I write those, I'm going to use set notation, and then I'm just going to write the inputs because domain deals with input. Domain is the set of all possible input values that are used in a given function. The range in this case is the set of outputs. So I have 3, negative 5, 0, and 5. When I write that set, I usually want to put the elements of the set in increasing order. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So if you're asked to write your answer using set notation, then you're going to want to include these brackets and then just list the elements of the set inside. When I look at a table, I'm going to apply much the same process that I did for the set of ordered pairs in that I'm just going to write the members of the input row as the domain and then the members of the output row that is my range. If my function is only given to me as a set of items in a table, then that's all the information that I have. When I go down to the graph, everything changes. Graphs are two-dimensional, meaning I have an ordered pair for every single one of the points that are part of this line and here and here. And so it may not look like it, but there actually are infinitely many of those ordered pairs. I can't actually list them out like I could here with the table values and with the set of ordered pairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by mapping the ordered pair, the very first ordered pair, to the horizontal axis. And this is at the number negative 6. I'm going to draw an open circle there because it's an open circle here. Then I'm going to go over to the last point of the graph and I'm going to map that with a solid line down and that is the number 7. So my inputs that make up this function occur on that horizontal line. So if I indicate the values here, let me double check here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's actually negative 7. I'm going to re do that, correct that. So then my input is negative 7 is less than x, less than or equal to a positive 7. I don't put an underline because I have an open circle. I have an open circle here because I have an open circle here, which means I can't actually get to that last point. So my x is trapped between 7 and negative 7, but it's strictly bigger than negative 7. This is my inequality notation. For interval notation, I'm going to have a parentheses, negative 7 to 7, with a closed bracket because I have an underline here and a solid dot here. My input values then can take on every value in between these two endpoints here. For the range, I'm going to map my ordered pair, I'm going to map the output to the vertical axis. So there's the lowest point and here's the highest point. Be careful, it's not the last point, it's the highest point. That's going to be a solid and then I'm going to indicate this is the mapping of my range and here's the negative 6 and that is going to go up to 5. So my range is negative 6 is strictly less than g of x less than or equal to 5. So again, the open circle comes into play with interval notation. It's negative 6 to 5, closed bracket, open circle. So pay close attention when you have a graph. It's way more difficult to find the domain and the range. But if you isolate the two dimensions, the input dimension and the output dimension, then your task will be much easier.